Welcome everybody to Tales from the Tackle Shop and we are on episode 22, I think. I know it is. Really? Yeah. One more to go. One more to go. Yeah, it's been, it's been a bit epic this year, isn't it? It seems long, I don't know why. Is it longer than normal? Or? I think it's because we're less planned than normal. Right. Yeah, in the past we've been really good at being planned and I think we've, we've <coughs> we shouldn't tell people this, we've kind of uh, winged it a bit, haven't we? Mm-hmm. But uh, we will be, be, next year's going to be bigger. Hopefully, yeah. And better. Alex is going to build me a podcast studio in his um, tackle shop. Yeah. Hopefully I have a new shop before then, but yeah. I think we could have a new podcast studio. Yeah. And we could have a little seats and we could charge people coming in watching live. You're thinking well ahead of yourself. Oh, I think it's a winner, mate. It could work, yeah. The people could buy season tickets. Uh, They'd be the same three people. Be like VIP. Yeah. And then we could have the, the commoners at the back. Commoners, yeah, that'd be everyone then, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, just about, yeah, that's you know, we've got, to look, yeah, we've got to think big, haven't we? So, that's what we'll do. Podcast studio next year. I think, I think I said the same thing last year. You probably did, I did, yeah, 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 yeah. But no, we'll get that sorted, right? So, this is our plan, everybody. We're going to do to this week and next week. Um, next week, we have got Alex's favorite guest on again. Polly's not on again, no, we can only have Polly once a year. Spolt, you know, it's not Spolt. Oh. I don't know, is it? You do. She, she's going to bring you some more fish and chips. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll yeah. pick on you again, but she's yeah. desperately keen to come just, on. Just because she, you know, absolutely rinsed you. Now you're her best friend. And she rinsed you, mate. Is she? I don't know you. <laughs> Abby, who? <laughs> so Abby's on next week. So that'd be great. And she doesn't uh, even go fishing anymore. Mate, you might lose your co-host spot, so be careful. Oh, well. Yeah. So we'll get Abby I'm on next week. <laughs> don't be like that, because you're building a new podcast studio. And this week we will crack on with one or two things. And we have got a guest this week, but we're not going to let on who it is just yet. We'll invite them to sit with us in a mo. But <clears throat> before we get to that, though, you had Hey Jack yesterday. We did indeed, last round, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. Another season gone. Um, fished a bit patchy, which we thought it would do. Um, yeah, just don't know. The season and everything with the weather and everything's just a bit... Flat, if you know what I mean. I had a lot of fish yesterday. I didn't tell you this. I snuck out. Did you? I had a PB rud. Did you? Yeah. One pound, two pound? Two pound ten. Oh, right. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. That's, that's Did a bit you catch that on a lure or? No, I was actually fishing for them. Oh. Yeah. And I thought of you a lot. I thought, God, you, you, yeah, lot, would you, have, boys don't you, <laughs> you lot would have liked a tenth of what I've had today, but um, yeah. you just don't know where to go, do you? You'll sit there with your poles out. We'll talk about the Hay Jack in a minute, and we have a few other results. And we may even get um, it presented in a different yeah. way as well this week, yeah. in a far better way than normal. Obviously. Yeah, people have to listen to you droning on, and uh, mm. yeah, I'm sure everyone will, will enjoy the new way we're going to announce the match results. Cool. Right, shall we talk about our tackle review section first? Right. What have you What have you brought for show and tell then? Well, I like to. I always like to use the same stuff. So, I have got a comp on Saturday and Sunday, and I need really strong hooks. Yeah. But I need them to be made with tungsten weights on the end. Right. So they're sm- they're smaller than lead. Yeah. And I always use a, use a company called Vike, and I couldn't get any. So I had to like then scramble around, and I've got these from LMAB. These are brilliant. I've used these on the fen drains recently. Not in this way, in lighter weights. And what normally happens with jig hooks, the hooks are really crap, like real cheap. Right. And they go, they're either blunt when you start off with, or they're, 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 they don't, you can't sharpen them. So when I got these, I thought, these look, they actually looked to be made properly. And then when I used them, I thought, these are so much better than the normal stuff you get. So they're sharper. <clears throat> the hooks are stronger and sharper. And also, you can sharpen them with... You know how with chemically sharpened hooks, you can't sharpen them? Mm. You want hooks that are made out of proper metal, so you can sharpen them. Mm. You can like sharpen. to see you do that with a 24 iron Yeah, but you use strange things, don't you? But also, if you look, there's even got the little, they even thought about the retainer that holds the plastic in place. Yeah. So what, with, uh, what I have to do with some of these is glue them on, the, glue the plastic bait on, but with these, you don't have to. Right. And I just like the way they were made. And like I said, I've used them for two or three weeks, and I was really impressed. So... If anybody's so who uh, are LMAB then? It is a German company, and I can't remember the correct pronunciation. It's a bit like BMW. Okay. But LMAB. So they do a lot of lures, and I don't like their lures. The lures are a bit meh. But these jig hooks I thought were really good. So 
I'm impressed with these. And when are we win at the weekend? What is the comp, comp, as you say? What is it? I told you last week. You weren't paying attention. Yeah, I did, but I forgot. Um, World, Predator, World Predator Classic at Grafton. World yeah. Predator Classic, yeah. yes. So, the, this is vital, because obviously if you hook a big pike... Is that when you've got to catch so many of each species? Three perch, three zander, one pike. Which just one pike? Just. Mm. Uh, most people won't catch anything like that. It'd be really difficult. So why have they done it in that way? Because of the time of the year, or what? What deters what species and what numbers you've got to catch? Uh, it's all, it's always three, three and one. Right. Unless it's hot and they knock the pike out, because it used to be in the summer. Right. So then they'd up it to five and five, five right. perch, five zander. So the whole point of the comp is that it's testing the angler's skills to catch the all three. three yeah. yeah. And they've given a 10 metre bonus length to anyone that gets the full card. Right. So if you get the full card, you do one anyway. And it's and the competition is on full length of all the fish put together. Yeah. So the perch not average weight, no, because if you're weighing them in a boat, yeah. cheating can happen. And right. But if you're measuring them, you you basically have to you get a measure. We we put it through an app, and then you have to take the photos, send mm-hmm. it through the app with the measure. But also, they normally give you a sticker to put on the measure for that day. Right. So you can't use photos on the same measures that you've caught from previous weeks, months, whatever. And then it's total length. So the perch is going to be about 45 centimetres on average. Right. The zander will be 77. Well, if anyone catches a pike, it could be whatever, 80 to 100 centimetres. So they've given a 10 metre bonus to any team that gets a full card. Right. 10, to, 10 metre. To try and promote catching the, th- the three right. different species. Well, 10, 10 metres is a lot, isn't it? It's to push everyone to... Yeah. Well, if, if, you, if it's 10 metres... T- one metre or ten metres? No, ten. Ten metres? Yeah. Well, then you just, all you need to do is make sure you catch one of each species, whether they're that big or that big. Cause no, there's a minimum size. No one's going to beat you, are they? No, you need... You, you've got to go for it properly, but there's mm. a minimum size. You can't catch the little... But also, how do you target the little ones? It'd be impossible. Anyway... Well, so, to do it, so... <sighs> very funny, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you boys, you don't know, do you? No. Anyway, that's my offering. These are really good. I'm really impressed with these. So, Josh Pace, if you're watching, mm. who I have converted, this is what I recommend you get. These are Vike are really good as well, but I like these ones as well. So, he doesn't L- use these. So he uses dead baits, doesn't he? He has asked me about jig hooks, yeah. Uh, he won't like that because you've got to move about and chuck things in, and he just likes chucking it and waiting. Well, him, AD, I've converted them all uh, to well, pike anglers this all winter. Two of them, yeah. Yeah. Well, those are the ones that are doing it quietly, I haven't yeah. told you. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, so that's my offering. I like those. Yeah. What, did, what have you brought with you? Um, I've brought two things. I've bought... These floats are like... You know you've probably got your favourite float you have forever. Um, You're not going to believe this, right? Yeah. Back in the day, I, my favourite pole float was this colour. And it can't be the same, mate, because that was 103 years ago. Mm, no. Plus this, you can't see that, Bristol. <laughs> uh, so these are the original Preston, I think they're called Magic Series 6, PT Series 6. Um, they're a wire stem, like a teardrop shaped body and a fibre bristle. If you can get a close up of these, these have been repainted, re-varnished a million times because they don't make them anymore. Um, the reason why I use them is the, the wire is a slightly heavier wire, so for venues like around here where you've got that wind and skim it just goes un- gets underneath the wind but still remains sensitive with a fibre bristle um, you can use pinkies, squats uh, bread, anything on that float when they originally come the bristles like twice the length um, which is no good for the venues around here so these are all butchered and doctored for fishing around here um, and the reason why I'm showing them is because thankfully Simon Willsmore's copied them so I've given him a sample of all all the like from 0.4 to 2 gram um, so he's hopefully ready for next season we'll have a full range of these but newer basically Ooh. which I know people will be happy about oh Simon oh love you Simon <laughs> yeah so um, yeah look look out watch this space um, they, they they are just like these the pole float, I yeah. can't remember what make they were. Pole floats haven't changed massively no. in many <coughs> years, but that particular wire... What are they going to be called, do you know? I haven't got a clue. Right. I haven't got a clue, but 
for anyone that's fishing the drains that that's what's coming out anyway um the other thing is made in italy i would say they are yeah 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 um the other thing is this is a landing extension so with a lot of anglers moving on to commercials obviously you tend to use smaller landing net handles with this this is designed to go in any of the diver top end landing net handles so you can take it from a four meter to a five and a half so it's just a little extension rather than buying a whole brand new landing net handle oh i see this is just an extension for it if you're fishing like Gloucester canal or real deep venues where you're up high it just goes on it's just and it'll fit other makes as well so if you've got like a four meter handle and you want to make it five chances are that will probably fit so i think they're around 60 quid um so yeah just a new product and the other thing we spoke about the other week was the dolly butts wasn't it it was yeah well finally they've turned up uh, there's a few in stock what's left the diver ones yeah and they're basically copied similar to what I had with the, the bungs in the end. They've put some foam in each end and they're mm. a little bit lighter than last year. So they're improved. They're slightly more money, but they are improved. So uh, if you're in the market for one of them, just give us a shout. There was a guy, I can't remember the guy's name. He sent us a brilliant question about the Matrix ones as well, didn't he? Oh, I haven't seen that. I messaged it to you and you said they don't fit though, the sphere poles. No. <clears throat> because no. Um, the mate, when Polly showed us the Matrix ones on the video we mm -hmm. put out last week... Mm -hmm. The Matrix dolly butts or pole protectors don't f only fit no. the Matrix poles. The, I tried the the diver ones on the sphere poles, and they they're either exactly the same size or they go halfway up the section, which obviously is no good. So, um, but yeah, it seems to be a thing about little mini extensions and things like that. So the mini extensions are only fit in the poles. The 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 company. Yes. Is, yeah. Yes, but this landing it handle will fit a lot of other mates. Cool. I think it'll probably fit the Garbolino, the Maver. Um, Did I fit the wrong way around then? No, that goes in. That obviously goes into the the landing handle, and that's the end of it. Oh, I did have it the wrong way around. I thought uh, so. It's... Oh, I see. Yeah. So that's quite it's reinforced there as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. strong. Yeah. yeah, it's not too heavy, so it doesn't outbalance the handle. Is that new? As in new? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of weeks, something like that. It's red as well. Diver red, yeah. 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 So Gav will buy one. Oh, well, tackle tart be on there. Yeah, he will, won't he? Yeah. Like tramp on chips. <laughs> <laughs> so you got nothing in there? That was where these were? No, nah, it's just some other ones, yeah. They can go back in there. I oh, can't leave them out too long. Everyone will be looking at my rigs. Keep it secret. So how long have you had those floats? Uh, some of them I've <coughs> had eight, nine years. Yeah. No, not that long enough, what you were going to say, when you were like no, two. No, it's long enough when you use them quite a bit, but... There's been, is it Sally Hansen or whatever? The nail varnish, clear nail varnish. Don't know how many bottles of that have been put on them just to harden them up so the line don't cut into the body. Um, have you ever lost any? Yeah. it would be distraught. Oh, when a, when you hook a snag or in a tree or whatever, it's like, oh, that's another one gone. Oh. Yeah. It's like you lost a kid or something. <laughs> so Will's more needs to get a, a, a move on, really. Yeah, he does, yeah. yeah. Well, I haven't heard from him for a little while. No? No. Oh. You know what I mean? Oh, we'll love you, Simon. I think he's dumped me. Oh. Yeah. We haven't had, a, we haven't had got our heads together for another video yet. Oh. It, it, about time. And you've got a new new mate now, haven't you? Oh, we'll love you, Polly. Oh, yeah. 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 So, Polly, we had the first one out last week, didn't we, on Tuesday? I yeah. really should do I really should get prepared. I haven't got to keep looking at this. Um, tomorrow, which will be actually the day after, before... So, the day before <laughs> this is out. <laughs> yeah, because this comes out on Wednesday. So, on Tuesday... We've got um, you and Polly. Oh, right. Yeah. Talking about, talking about the, his float range. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so that was really good, wasn't it? So mm -hmm. we've got Polly's pole floats and the plastic range of wagglers as well. But if, you haven't, if you're watching this, you need to go back to that one because that will be out the day before mm -hmm. and watch that as well. So that's really good. And, uh, yeah, I quite like video and you two doing that. It was good. Good. Yeah, worked well. Right, I think we should delve into something a bit different that we touched upon a few weeks ago. And uh, I think one or two anglers will it will resonate with them. Mm, I'm sure they will. Yeah. So I'm going to say cut. Okay. So we've all changed and uh, changed seats, and we have a guest. This is Tara. Hello. Alex, you don't know this. No. Nope. Me and Tara are at school together. Really? Yeah. You're about as old as he. <laughs> I am. Uh, no. I was 
25 and she was 10, but no, you know, yeah, she's a teacher or something. Yeah. <laughs> so Tara's come here today because bizarrely, we're obviously professional podcasters and she wants obviously, to see yeah. how podcasts are made. And YouTube followers. Oh, we're, yeah. yeah, we're bigger Subscribe. than all the others, aren't we? Mr. Beast, who is it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. That's KSI, what, eat your heart out. Yeah. You and Abby. <laughs> yeah. Box it. She'll kick, kick your ass in yeah. that as well, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> you guys were probably wondering what. So Tara doesn't fish, but she's here watching how we make a podcast because obviously we are so professional. So she's watching how we do it so she can take tips how not to do it. Mm. But Tara's got, you, you've got a background, Tara, in health and fitness, haven't you? And you run your own health and fitness business. I do. You do, yeah. yeah. And these days, would you say you're getting more into well being and mindset? Yeah, I think definitely there's been a shift. It used to be more about, you know, how many reps you can do, how much weight you can push. Yeah, how fast you can run, and now it's more about mind and body. Yeah, that's a big thing. You know, and I think it's broadened as well, so it's about getting enough sleep. No one ever spoke about getting enough sleep when we first started going to the gym, did they? No, no. Um, You know, getting enough sleep, getting enough sunlight, all of those kinds of things are now coming into play that weren't even talked about before, so... Well, sunlight's a big thing, we'll talk about it in a minute, but... did I tell you about the guy we had on with his prostate cancer? No, no tell right, me. Right, so we had a guy called Jeff on four months? Uh, probably about six weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, and we didn't know this had happened. Did you know, Alex, that he was recovering from prostate? Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. And we had him on because basically he organises local matches. So I wanted to get him on because he was like a bit of a, a, one of those local heroes who organises matches. Yeah. But he was desperate to tell us about how he was recovering from prostate cancer. And it kind of blew me away a little bit because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. And um, were you, uh, it was quite a big thing, wasn't yeah, it? And yeah. he was quite emotional about yeah. it. And it struck a chord with me that basically we this is something that, even though it's not directly linked to angling, that we need to talk about. Yeah. Because men are useless about talking about things. We are crap. And we don't talk about it. We bottle it up. And a, few, a couple of weeks ago, about three weeks, four weeks ago, we didn't have a podcast, did we, Alex? No. Remember? It's basically because I couldn't be bothered. I, don't, I just had enough of doing all the editing and all this. And I just said, mate, I, I message Alex, I said, I can't be bothered this week. And we had loads of messages from listeners who missed it. Yeah. And you kind of think, wow, this is quite powerful stuff that this is part of people's routine listening to you this. You probably weren't even aware of it. Blissfully unaware. Yeah. And that's yeah. what's really triggered all these things in my mind. And that's one of the reasons why I thought, well, there's no point you come in watching. You might as well just join in because yeah. you've got a wealth of knowledge about this. Yeah. And we, I, mentioned, I mentioned this to Alex a couple of weeks ago, why do you go fishing? And Alex was really good at just telling us. So I think if we spend 10 minutes talking about this, this would be pretty cool. Because yeah. there'll be people out there who are struggling and there'll be people out there who go fishing just to escape from the stresses of everyday life. Yeah. And there'll be people out there who perhaps don't realise they're struggling. And it's only perhaps now the penny's starting to drop. And I think there's so many things these days that are available that we can do to help each other. Yeah. That I think even five years ago, taboo subjects. Yeah. Death 20 years ago, men wouldn't talk about anything. No, no, that's right. Because we are totally useless, yeah. So Alex, I mean, for people that missed it, if I ask you, why do you go fishing? What would you say are the, the strongest reasons for going? Uh, well, lots of reasons. Um, the main reason is because I obviously enjoy it. But when, I, when I'm fishing, you know, the whole day of, you know, getting up early, the buzz of meeting your fellow anglers, the banter, the breakfast, just general chit chat. Then you fish. Well, for me, the match starts five or six hours and then it's ended. So when I'm fishing, I'm not thinking about absolutely anything else other than fishing. And it's like, I don't know, your brain goes into a different zone that you don't, you don't realize you just that's part of what you do. It's almost like you're asleep. Yeah. Like you're sleepwalking almost. And then obviously match finishes and then you have your banter and blah, 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 chatting to people afterwards. And it's like a family of anglers. Yeah. So you're bouncing off each other. One week you're on a downer because you've done bad, but you know, someone's, you're going to get grief, but you know, next week someone else is going to get grief. And I don't know, just the whole day is just, it goes like that. That camaraderie, though, is probably part of the uh, the whole day for you as yeah, well, yeah, though, yeah. isn't oh, it? Yeah, so even if you've not fished particularly brilliantly, no. you'll probably still come away feeling better than well, you exactly. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And it's funny because we had a conversation about something similar because Andy and I are doing some hiking, aren't we? We are, yeah, yeah. So we did a outdoors. Wow. She marched me along the beach a few yeah. weeks ago, but we're going up to Snowdon and Ben Nevis, aren't we? Yeah. So wow. I had this is part of the fitness campaign. I'm trying to get fit and tired. You, you like walking. Your health drive. Yeah. Well, that's. Yeah, your fishing is my. I go yeah. hiking. Yeah. I, uh, you know, whilst the gym is where my fitness was born, because I was crap at sport at school, never, never part of any team. I used right. to bunk off games. Right. You know, when this yeah. lot were out doing cross country, I was hiding by the lamppost and then just would stroll back into school. Having a fag? <laughs> well, no, I didn't smoke, to be fair. <laughs> no, but, you know, I was not into sport at all. So right. I only found fitness later in life. And whilst initially it was all gym, 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 um, did a bit of bodybuilding and that kind of thing, it was about 2017, 2018. Mm. I just wanted to escape. So I went outdoors you know i was going through a bit of a bit of emotional turmoil yeah. and i just found found myself totally at peace at the top of a mountain mm-hmm. just me and my dog you know and i'd quite look forward to getting to the top and then coming back down afterwards having a glass of wine yeah looking at all my photos that i'd you know taken along the way up to the summit and that was my happy place mm-hmm. but you were talking about this like you're almost in like a, a meditative, yeah, yeah, like a trance yeah. or a meditative state when you're fishing. Yeah. And and I, I listen to a lot of books actually, and they talk about the fact that if you can train your brain to disengage from all everything else and focus on what you're doing, you're actually working on all those neural sensors in your brain as well. So it's good for your brain right. as well as your. You're right, it's Mental. a trance state, yeah. yeah. Well, when Alex said that, I thought, well, that's because I remember telling you, exactly, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, you do. It's weird. You can't explain it. You kind of just, you drift off. Yeah. But you're totally focused you're, on what you're, you're doing. You are, but you're, so you know what's going on, who's catching what and stuff like that. You're aware of the weather and stuff, but you just, I don't know, it's like you're blinkered. Yeah, yeah. Completely just transfixed on what's going on. Alex, do you think you're more aware of the weather? Because I am. I, uh, I can I feel the wind and all sorts of things. It's really weird. I don't normally like, pay attention to it. Uh, how can I put it? You obviously are because obviously presentation and things like that. So you, you notice the wind's changed direction or the wind's got colder. You know, as an angler, you just sat there, you're wrapped up in the middle of winter. You're free, not cold because you've got all the gear, but just a slight temperature change and you can feel it. Did you feel it yesterday afternoon? Yeah, like you can feel it, it on the back of your hands. It drops about five degrees, doesn't it? Oh, it's it yeah. it cold, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's got real cold, isn't it? And it's just, I don't know. You're just in a different world. Yeah. Totally different world. But you've probably got a heightened awareness of your other senses, as I think you do, what you're yeah. saying. You do, like yeah, you tune in to the weather or the yeah. noise or. And I think it's when you get better at the sport, you tune in more. Yeah. I'm absolutely convinced of this. You yeah. kind of pick up nuances which you don't appreciate a lot of the time but you yeah. just do things yeah. so when I film Alex or the guy we'll talk about Simon Wills more uh, they are very good anglers they'll do things you go well, why did you do that and sometimes they go well you, let's just I'll oh, do that that will happen yeah and it's like how do they know yeah <laughs> but they do <laughs> preempted yeah. things yeah but they react to what's happening and it's quite it's very skillful yeah so but so for because I would like non-anglers to watch the podcast as we get bigger and yeah I'm, and I walked around Tesco's a few weeks ago, and one of the, bizarrely, several people stopped me in March. <laughs> there were ex people, some of them, yeah. and they all watch it, and they don't fish. Oh, and I thought, this is lovely. This is so cool. So it's yeah. nice having someone like Tara on, who's not into fishing at all, talking about something that's linked. Yeah. To be honest, you might as well have been talking Chinese yeah. earlier. <laughs> yeah. You know, you were having a conversation in a totally different language. Yeah, it's, and we were like quite happy in it, weren't we? <laughs> yeah, in a little box going, talking... Yeah. It's interesting, though, because I walk my dogs along the waterways at Magdalen. Mm-hmm. Often fishermen down there, you know, and I am guilty as charged. I would walk past these people thinking, well, it's not really a sport, is mm-hmm. it? They're just sitting there having some sandwiches for the afternoon for and, and just yeah. having yeah. a little day out. Yeah, just some a picnic. Those, those anglers probably are. It's yeah. just a little Fair. picnic, you know. But it's their release, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's their leisure time. So you say when you go walking up the mountains, yeah. that's kind of you get in a bit of a trance state. That's you, my therapy. When you're walking, yeah. do you sometimes think oh, I can't? I can't remember walking up. No, exactly like that. And and I know a lot of the paths quite well. But it's just literally one foot in front of the other. I don't listen to music or anything like that. I like to hear what's going on. Well, you've got to be completely alert of the weather (laughs) up there, you know. Um, 
and I will stop and say hello to people and you know I've met some interesting people but I let them do them and I I definitely will do me mm. um you know I've taken groups of clients up mountains before sometimes it's a challenge to get everyone up to the top more or less the same time get them down but what I've Without question, though, when they've all got down at the end of the day and we're all chatting about how mm. the day went and how the climb went, a massive sense of achievement with some of these people that would not would never have gone up the mountain. So with these people that would never go up the mountain, do you find some of them, you can actually see they, they did start getting into it? Yes, yeah. And did you find other people, they're never going to get into it? Well, I think just some people just built in confidence. That, you know, they're probably never going to take it up as a but perhaps they as a pastime. didn't enjoy it or didn't... But, but I think definitely you can see a mindset shift. I, I always ch- take, take this little route. It's quite a challenge. It's about 45 minutes of slog. And if they can get to the top of that bit, that without too much of, of a problem, that will then determine whether we carry on oh, with the slog and go this clever, way, yeah. or whether we just walk along the ridge and then go back down and walk around the lake and go back to the pub. You know, but if they've got up that first 45 minute slog without too much trouble, then I know that the mentality is there to just repeat that <coughs> a few more times to go around a, a much bigger loop. Oh, so you test so, them at first. That's, yeah, that's yeah, I do, yeah. 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 It's also it's quite safe as well because you can then gauge what they can <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. you can only go as fast as the slowest person. You yeah. can only go up as high as the, you know, the least conditioned person can achieve. So yeah. you are a bit limited to what you can do so but you can definitely see a shift in people's mindset you know at the start they're like we're going where <laughs> up there yeah. yes we are <clears throat> you know? i think you said daylight yeah sunshine yeah now did we speak about this on the walk we might have done yeah because yeah. i reckon this is what circadian rhythms we were talking about that, yeah you i don't know any of the terms i've just i've just found some stuff on youtube and i've kind of gone wow so alex here's a question for you mm-hmm there's research now reckons that we need to get at least an hour a day of sunlight into our eyes, not like blinding ourselves, right. but like being subjected to it, particularly as soon as we get up, really. So as soon as we get up, trying to expose ourselves to this natural light, particularly in the first hour of getting up. And I wonder if that's... Anglers have to go because they've kind of got this body clock. And like every Sunday... It'd be like, that's how guys mm. go for it. They'd be working all week, yeah. wouldn't they? That's yeah. Saturday spent with the family. Yeah. Sunday morning... Like that, up probably, probably without you guys watching this, without even having the alarm going off, your body wakes up. Yeah. And that's really good. You kind of think, when you start thinking about it, there's something else going on. Yeah. I'm convinced. Like going to work, your alarm wakes you up. It's a bit like when you're going to the airport, isn't it? Y- yes. You've got yeah. subconsciously, Subconscious. your yeah. subconscious knows, yeah. don't go to sleep. Exactly. You've got yeah. to wake up for the airport. But it's like you, you, you set your body clock. Yeah, you have, yeah. And because you know a lot more about this, Tyra. So, circadian. Your circadian rhythm is just basically your sleep and your wake times. And is that some, the twenty-four hour one? Well, some people are geared. Their circadian rhythm is a morning, and some people are called night owls, and their circadian right, okay. rhythm is naturally set to later. So my daughter is definitely a night owl. You know, she does not function in the morning, mm. whereas I'm a morning person. Fishermen are probably morning people, yeah, because they've yeah. got to be up and about. Yeah. You know, um, but it's it. Your circadian rhythm also is really good for your health if you can keep in a rhythm. So, yeah. you know, and it's about waking up to natural sunlight, exposing yourself to daylight, not sitting indoors all day, you know, which is a bit of a worry considering how many people are indoors all day now. Yeah, yeah. You know, with their jobs, you know. That's right, yeah. I mean, we had lockdown and a lot, a lot of the jobs then went to um, people yeah. working at home, didn't they? Yeah. So there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of science behind this, yeah. isn't there? And common sense, really. So... Fishing, in theory, is good for your health. Yeah. Purely from the fact that you're outdoors in natural sunlight. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, even if nothing else is that. Exactly. You know. Yeah. 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 So um, that's interesting, though. Is when you start to dig, how yeah. many things are associated not just with angling, but actually getting outside. Yeah. Get up early. That's right. And like Alex and a sense of purpose as well. Like if you're you're get you said part of your excitement yeah. is getting up. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to this competition. I'm going to meet people. I'm going to have a beer afterwards. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's all part and parcel of what makes you get up and do it mm-hmm. and having that purpose, isn't it? And you know, people without purpose tend to be more anxious and depressed. So. 
Mm. Having a purpose is really important. And, and we spoke about that as well. We did, yeah. We? When so, you lose your purpose. Yeah, you got you need a purpose, don't you? Yeah, you you do. need several purposes really, yeah. yeah. Would you also say that, you know, with your um your your health and fitness business, because obviously you you have quite a few people come to you in certain seven mornings of the week. Yeah. So have you found that with them? I think you get them into a routine and they're there. Yeah. You can see them actually kind of settling into this kind of rhythm. Yeah. I would say, I've, I mean, I've been doing this now about 10 years and the clients that I've got now, we're, we're a bit like your community that you mm-hmm. were talking about. We're really tight, you know. And I would say of of our our little fitness family, as I call them, 80, 85% of them are super regular, will always be there. And you have this kind of 15% that kind of dip in and dip mm-hmm. out, and that's all great. Um, but super regular, super committed. Um, but not only the health benefits, we benefit from being part of a bigger collective. Yeah, yeah. And also, and we were talking about this before, um, before we started the podcast, is... We get just as much benefit from the coffee afterwards and the deep conversations as no doubt you do from having the beer afterwards. You get just as much from that. And it's about developing friendships as well, isn't it? So, you know, wellness is is a big, big umbrella and the the fitness part of it is just one part of it, isn't it? Well, a a strange thing, right? So, at the front here's the river that these guys love. It's an amazing little river. And... Last week was the big match of the year, like national match. It was held here in the decoy and at Benick. And there was a practice match the week before. So a lot of the anglers fishing the week before were from all over the country. And I just watched, just, I was just, I just have to be there at the end. And some of the guys I've met this season as a video, Alex and his team and some of the other teams, I've got to know them just by name. And what was really strange, I didn't, I just, I just thought of it then as you were mentioning it. As we were following the board down, we all gravitated towards each other. Yeah. So there was Sid, who I called Stan. Has yeah. he seen you? <laughs> you appreciate that, I'm sure. Sid's yeah. 81. Wow. And he is like a spring chicken. It's incredible. He doesn't fish, but he's there every week with his team. Really? And he'll sit there with one particular angler. And I he's like, that. yeah. You, you call him the Wally with the Brolly, don't you? Yeah. 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 So I, I was with him and there was, um, oh. The Wally with the Brolly. Matrix. Oh, little Brolly, like, about this big, like. And it's like you can imagine the weather. And he sat behind this brolly at the top of the bank with all the wind and rain and everything at him. And he's like this, holding on, like this, oh. all right, all right, on his phone. And you think, it's got to be a while. I thought fishing brollies are meant to be huge. They are, but he, he's at the top. He's not. He's just watching. And oh. well, He kind of yeah. a big body because it was like making shadow and stuff, I suppose. Oh, yeah. okay. But I was talking to him. I was also talking to, oh, Epicenter. Moretti. Tom Moretti. So I was talking to him, talking to Sid, who are called Stan, and then, is it Damien? Damien Green. Who fishes with Browning? Dan Abbott. Who used to fish with you? Dan Abbott. Uh, fishes with Browning. And hot Rods. Big guy. Big guy? Tall. Damien, Darren. Oh, I can't remember his name. This is, this is well, you're no good with names, aren't no, you? No, I know, I know. But all, <laughs> we just all gravitated yeah. with all these other people that we didn't know. Yeah. But because I suppose you have, you, you get got this, a common theme. Yeah, common theme. You? Yeah. yeah. But we, we, human beings naturally do it. Yeah, that's right. It was, it, and we all just like chatting and walking, and you just think it wasn't. It wasn't until you mentioned that I thought. Yeah, I think we do this, don't we? Yeah. As human nature. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, we are designed to be in tribes. Yeah, that that is what we're designed for, and yeah. and actually another stat for you, which was quite shocking that I was reading about last week, is that loneliness is a bigger killer than heart disease. Because people who are lonely are forty percent more likely to die early of anything. Because loneliness makes you less mm. well, and if you're less well, you're then more likely to die early. It affects your health that much, being lonely. So we yeah. think of lonely as like little old ladies who, whose family have all died sitting at home watching Coronation Street. We, we conjure up this image mm. and that's what lonely is. But actually, loneliness is like a first world problem. And, and it's, it, it affects a lot more people than we, that we would automatically think. So, yeah, loneliness. Yeah, I can see that because, um, yeah, it, I think what we've found out doing the podcast is that it's brought a lot of people together. together. It has, yeah. yeah, it's been really good. Yeah. And uh, it's nice having someone who's got an unbiased view pointing it out. <laughs> it is because 
we just talk, as you said, in a different language. Yeah. And we just... Yeah. Bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. So, Alex, would you... You know, like, so, like the Hey Jack, would you say it's similar numbers, like 85% of the same people each week? Yeah, within reason. Obviously, it's the same sort of mix of anglers. So yeah. 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 Sort it, of area, it's quite a big catchment that this draws a lot of anglers from all over. But this time of year, the same anglers travel down. So after three or four years, you can have a bit of banter with them. And, yeah. You know, they go off and fish wherever they're from. But when they come down here, it's like they're part of the community. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I would never have thought this three or four years ago. Even I think last year, I was noticing more with the viewing figures and the messages we were getting from people. But it's coming to a head, really. You can't notice it more and more. Yeah. And it's really important that um, everyone's just there, aren't they, helping yeah. each other? You, think... you don't know what impact you're having. Sorry, no, I'll cut no. you there. Um, I mean, obviously, we do team fishing, match fishing, so your groups, whereas fishing, on the other hand, can be very, you know, Billy No Mates over there as yeah. well. Yeah. If you want to be that person, yeah. it's the perfect You could fall sport. into that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The branch of the sport I do is very is very isolated, right? Because it's like you're just trying to catch one big fish, oh, okay? And you are searching all over the place, yeah. And you're not telling anybody anything. Oh, yeah, it's keeping like, it all to yourself. Yes, yeah. KGB is. Oh, yeah, okay. it, that, you can get that. It does. It does get really kind of. It's yeah. hard work. <laughs> so I'm like, well, what am I doing this for? This we kind of go. <laughs> yeah. I've had enough of this. Yeah. So that's, I'm not looking forward to this competition at the weekend because there'll be. 100 anglers there. Wow. I don't know just about all of them. Yeah. All encroaching on your territory. Oh, yeah, it'd be like, yeah. How dare they? For Andy. Where's he going? Yeah, because <laughs> some of them are going to do it on purpose because they know it winds But it's all banter, it's fun, you see. So yeah. that's completely different. So, yeah, yeah it is good. No, it's, it is interesting, isn't it? I, it hasn't really struck me so, it's so obviously, as it has done recently, how important that we all have these tribes yes. that we're connected yeah. to. So, we're going to read that match results in a minute. And it's I think it's really good about these. The, the the local clubs are fantastic that they keep working because even they only get five guys at a match, it's, it's worth having, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. really good. Because also, the, Alec, when I go to the tackle shop tower and see Alex, you can't speak to him sometimes. Why not? His phone's going yeah. all the time. Customers. Yeah. And sometimes... Some... Oh, he's too busy for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm now... I can wait. But some, <laughs> some customers will be there for hours because that's... They're, that's what they need to do, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's and I think Alex appreciates this. He's um, been doing it for so long. Would you say that's fair comment? Well, I'm, I'm a, a, f a fuel their addiction to fishing. Don't you're I? the go-to man. Yeah, but I you're know. also a social I've worker. I've got two phones. Yeah. Dodgy. <laughs> Everyone two phones is dodgy. <laughs> you're a social worker, a um, counselor. Yeah, counselor. A, um, I can relate to a that. A salesman. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Whatever else. I just think it's uh, important, isn't it? That uh, it's we're like a hub. Yeah, it is a hub. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. It's, it's a very good hub. Right. I like that. Because I think there'll be a lot of people out there who will go, hmm. Might strike a chord. I think it will. Like it will. Because we had lots of nice messages. Could be another the... excuse to say to your missus, look, I need so many hours a day. Like, think, yeah. I go fishing. <laughs> you need to give me a pass down because yeah. I need to go for my well being. But also, getting youngsters into the sport, isn't it important? We get them outside doing something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah and that's, yeah, that's yeah. the other thing, not just angling, yeah. whether it's anything outdoors. Anything. Yeah, rather than sat at home playing on the. Get these... off the PlayStation. Yeah. 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 But we've just, you've, you've mentioned several reasons why it's really important. Yeah, so, it is. yeah, we just need to have it common sense and get them out there doing it. Right, talking of match results, how are we going to do this? Because, um, Tara's going to read out some of the match results. Yeah. I, feel, I, I think feel Alex, has stitched, Alex has stitched her up. No. <laughs> <laughs> should we, should we do it in order? Yeah, what do would you like me to so, do? So, so what we do it, well, we, we do it in a he geographical. Yeah, I'll do okay. one first. Yeah, oh, right. so You've got a bit to do first. I have, you? yeah. I'm going to actually go out, out of slightly geographical. Should I do Winmore Steve's first? Yeah, because I don't, I don't know that right, one. Right, so go so that's one of Alex's oh, customers, but he missed a, him out. Must be so, a West End friend. So uh, <laughs> Windmill Steve sent me this last Tuesday, and obviously it was Real too late watch. to stick on the last week's podcast. And this was from the, the Tuesday. This is Windmill Steve. Yeah, is that yeah. his real name? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, we'll explain later. Okay. Right, this is the Tuesday Club from the 28th of Feb. So, Alex, where would this have been? It'd be uh, Bower, Bootsy Bower. Right. And I've just got this bit of paper. Look, that's what I've got. Well, that's so I've got, I've got to try and work out what's going on here. Cause, uh, so I've got no surnames as well, which is also very helpful. Yeah. So I'm going to read them out. Descending... Oh, you know why I sent this? Did he win? Yeah. Uh... 
Come on, Steve. Well, I presume so, because he's got Steve. <laughs> First, £12.10. Second was Lionel. With, do you know who Lionel is? Yeah. Are you going to help me with the surnames? No, here? I don't. I can't think of his second name. <laughs> 10 10. And third was P. 6 7. So, Steve, thanks for that. Yeah, but can you get a surname? The surnames yeah. would be quite helpful and also a bit more info. But obviously, he wanted me to read that out because he came first. Mm. So To be fair, they're done. sending their results for a little while, have they? So. They're obviously missing you out. Bob Fitzjohn there, didn't he do any good? Oh, I can't see. Hold on. He's... Jeez, he's normally there, isn't he? I actually finished early on Tuesday and I thought, oh, I'll go and see him on the Bower. I tried to get from Piddley Bob. to Whittlesey mm. and it took about an hour because of the road closures. Man. That's crazy, isn't it? You can't get anywhere. You just what? have to swim. Oh. Yeah, there is a Bob here. He got 5A and there's also a Keith. It doesn't no. say Colgate or... No, it won't, no. It might be him, no. He don't fish on a Tuesday. Doesn't he? They say around here. There's a Robin and a Tony and a Mel. But all sorts, but um, yeah, so that's that one. Right, let me go back up, up north, so to Spilsby. And Chris Hodson has sent me through um, the final league results. So this was from the 26th of Feb. Mm-hmm. Spilsby steeping Winter League Series final round. Very hard day for most, as you can see from the board. The river was clear, bitter wind, but Nathan Watson made it two in a row from peg 20. But he had tench again. There's a, there's a target, they, again. they hate. The, t- these match anglers they hate to be beaten while someone's caught a bigger fish out of the blue yeah. so a tench is like they go oh he's had a tench oh. so yeah so he's had a tench and some oh. perch and his favourite worm setup. Mark Mark Cook did well on upstream and pegged 27 with £5 now he hasn't sent me the actual results <laughs> which doesn't help <laughs> but he has sent me the final results as in for the whole league so first was do you know what it was Alex? Stampy, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Mixed. See, he knows. How does yeah. it go? Mixed stamp with seven points, retaining his title from last year. Uh, second was. I'm going to say Sammy Ash. Dave Ashmore. Dave Ashmore. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. How do you know? I just we, guessed. And Dave Dean was third with 11 points. Um, indeed, if it hadn't been a poor draw for Dave Dean in, on the fifth round, he probably would have been a bit closer. So there we go. So that's fantastic. And finally from Chris, he said, forgot to add matches will continue up to the end of the season, Sundays and Wednesdays. Keep an eye on the East Links Match Anglers Facebook page for info. Thanks, Chris, for all those. Right. That sounded like a plug. Mm. It was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so they've done well. Yeah, but... They're great because they've been. Uh, they were new last year to us, so they got in touch. And, oh, yeah, it's cool. really cool. So that's branching all... out. Yeah. yeah. Alex used to manage a fishery and tackle shop at Boston, didn't you? Yeah. So he knows uh, a lot of them from there. Yeah. Yeah. Almost what, up north. Are we going to subject northern there? Subject Tara to reading all of them, or do you want to just to do which ones you want to do? Uh, I'll do the Wilsey Saturday ones. So I don't think I'll put that on there. So uh, they was at Carrot Wash, and. Match winner again was Paul Wright with £24 exactly. Uh, Tench and a perch, I think. And then Mel Saggers was second with 15 5 And Windmill Steve, obviously that's why he didn't send you it, uh, £11.12 for... There'd be some of uh, these guys keep reappearing in the names. So they yeah, kind of do a circuit, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the same anglers fish the same Particularly matches. John Taylor, if he gets mentioned. Yeah, he, he, he actually... He got beat one side in that match, which is a rarity, but I think he had £10, 551 fish, <laughs> £10. Uh, this week, they're at Beggar's Bridge, so the last one of the season, uh, Beggar's Bridge, so that'd be all right, I would have thought. A few fish to be caught. Um, and then uh, there's a match, some matches coming up at Ferry. Obviously, it's the end of the season, so anglers are putting the gear away. Some of them are having a break, but a lot of anglers carry on. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Sorry, Peterborough are running a charity match on the 9th and 10th. I think I've got it written down here. 9th and 10th of April at Ferry Meadows. Um, so get booked in for that because that sells out really quick. Who do they need to contact? Uh, just the PDA website. There's a number on there, and I think you can book online as well. And then there's also a free match series, the Masters of Ferry, which I think Andy Levers won last year. What a draw bag. Uh, 16th of April, 7th of May, 21st of May and the 4th of June. So four matches there. I think it's on weight over the series. So again, book in on their website because that will set out really quickly. Um, so yeah, that's a few matches to cover 
when the season ends. And then we've got the Ramsey match and the Hajak match this week. So I don't know if you want to do that one first, if you can make out. Yeah. Uh, don't honor. mess it up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ramsey count. Oh, hang on. Glasses. <laughs> yeah. Wednesday open St. Mary's. Yeah. Bus conductor. Yeah. £11.10. Yeah. Richard Scratcher. Yeah. <laughs> £7.09. Yeah. And Ivan Benjamin Button, £7.02. Yeah, he loves that. When you call him Benjamin, does he go so weird? He? He's got, he? he's got yeah. brother, which we don't call Benjamin Button. Oh. And I think it causes a bit of... Bit of bad bit, bit ag, is it, between? Oh. No. Oh, no. I'd like to think it does. Dave's the better <laughs> angle. Oh, don't it, is yeah. it? Right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. And then Sunday, they were back at St Mary's again. Okay. So, on Sunday, we've got Ian Farrow, £5 on the nose. Yeah. Benjamin Button, there's that name yeah. again, £4.12. Yeah. Claire yeah. Middleton, yeah. £4.03. Yeah. Oh, and that's something else. Yeah, entirely. Chip Shop Award. So, Malcolm the Chip... Clark. I've heard about this Chip Shop Award. Yeah. Which made me chuckle when Andy told me this story. Malcolm Plant. Yes, 100%. Make sure you get a t-shirt in the shop this week. He got battered from both sides. He did, yeah, just a bit. Before we do the next... Can Last we got... time he didn't weigh in and he, and he sort of sneaked away. Ah. He just tipped back, but this time he's weighed in, so and it's he's... only fair that he gets it before <laughs> the end of the Have season. you given the t-shirt yet? No, I'll see him at the weekend. Before we read those out, Tara, because yeah. I remembered, Alex, you sent me two pictures through, yeah. which I forgot to put on the podcast, so that's rem- reminded me. So... Who was the guy from... So we had Will Freeman last week. So I'll stick a picture yeah. up here. Of Will dog. Freeman, yeah. I've got his ready. And yeah. who was the other and one? And then we'll do the, this week's one. I think everyone oh, knows who it is. At the end, yeah. yeah. Just mention... This is them wearing the T-shirt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just going back... Well you see a little Claire. smile on the side of Alex's face there when he... Look, look, look. He looks yeah, at yeah. the T... Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad the person got it this week. We've been waiting all year. So run a third spot on Sunday was Claire Middleton with £4.3, so... Well done, Claire. Uh, I think it's the first frame she might have had this year. So, is, well That's done. not the lady who does your accounts, is it? No, no. No, what's no. her name? Carol. Oh, I knew, well, that's close. Yeah. We need more ladies in angling. This is and, like... Look, yeah. everyone's name is not interchangeable, Andy. Oh, they are on my head. I just think, oh, I've got to learn so many. <laughs> I shall call you Steve. <coughs> yeah. Well, win more Steve, yeah. Yeah, call me. <laughs> yeah but I just, if we can get more ang- uh, females into angling, it'd be great. What a good idea. Should be known as White Horse Andy. That's what she'd be known as, shouldn't you? Really? Or the Ghost. Yeah, because this yeah. used to be the White, White Horse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what are we gonna do next? So Hey Jack or Monk Jack, as we call it. Okay, so teams on the day. Mm-hmm. Sanjay Gold, seventeen. Mm-hmm. March Tackle and I'm assuming that says Bates. Yes. Not Babes. No. That's a whole different. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> March, <laughs> March Tackle and Babes. <laughs> yeah. March Tackle and Babes 22. Yeah. And. Daiwa. Daiwa. No, I was never going to get that, no. was I? Daiwa Tackle and Bates, not yeah. Babes, 26. And Census Mark 1, 27. Yeah. Well so done. Alex is. Alex Bates. They're his, yeah. both his teams. So it's a bit like Wimble right. Steve, really, but they didn't come first. That's right. Yeah. No, we didn't, we didn't do well enough yet. But the fact right. that you. Oh, pulled... these are your teams. Yeah. Those two. Well, yeah. Yeah. Ah. This is the March. Branch, yeah, and then uh, that one's the main ones. But I, see, the March team are the slightly weaker team apparently, and they they've beaten yeah. the professionals. They did well this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah. yeah. But also the fact that you've called them tackle and babes is brilliant because some of the guys on here will yeah. now look, look, well, yeah. look at tackle and babes. Yeah, he's yeah. he's yeah. going to get it now with loads of messages, which is even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> so don't let me down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wednesday morning, there'll be loads of it. He'll be phoning, we going, ping, ping. Is that March Tackle and Babes? Yeah. <laughs> loving that. There's a new sideline yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You can get Pete in a gimp suit and all sorts, shouldn't well, you? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Much smart, wouldn't you? Yeah. Watch this space. Yeah. Only fans page Bob coming up. John. <laughs> oh, God. I've got a vision in my head that I don't want. Well, you know, Bob there's, John there's a world of tackle and babes. <laughs> I mean, what, babes. what more do you want for your only fans page? Yeah. <laughs> it's all there. Yeah. Look at He knows what's coming. Look how red he's gone. Right. <laughs> he can't wait. <laughs> Any more? Yeah. That's, o- overall then, team positions. Yeah, so obviously there's a, like that four one, matches oh, in oh, the yeah. series. Yeah. Um, that's the final league standings. Okay, so overall team positions. Stan J Gold six. Mm-hmm. Well done, Stan J. 
Now say this word again, Dewa. Yeah, that'll do. Dewa <laughs> tackling babes, as we'll now call them. Yeah. Nine. And is that image? Image, yeah. Image, 16. And tackling babes, March, yeah. 17. Yeah. Brilliant. And I'm assuming that the lower the number, the better. It's like athletics. Yeah. yeah. A bit like golf or whatever. You know, athletics, you win a race, you get one point. Okay. So it's like, yeah, so. Same. Yeah. So right. this team came first on Sunday, so they get one point, two point, three point, and it added ah, to the overall. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've only learned this after four years. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's you how, know. That's how they do it. You was always a slow learner at school. Oh, shit. Yeah. We'll yeah. learn, yeah. I'm supposed to be. Yeah. I used, you've made my night by calling them tackling babes. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for all these messages that are going to come. I'm only here for the entertainment, Yeah, though. you've done well, yeah, you can come back again, yeah. Okie doke, do you want me to read the next one? Yeah, and then that's, that's the individual side of it. Okay, so Benick, top individuals, Cheesy Bob Fittench. I really want to meet him. I'm that's it's... actually pop. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Fittench. <laughs> Bob Fitztench. That's right, yeah. 1407. Yeah. Is that pounds? That, that was, yeah, that yeah. was all tench. Right. Yeah. All tench. Um, four, Ian, Ian Young, I think that says. Yeah. yeah, Ian Young, 1403. Yeah. And Andre Agassi, I, I definitely want to meet him. Yeah. 1301. He was. Oof. No, our version's not quite, but oh. he's, he, we had him as a guest on a few weeks he, Did you? He, he wears a headband. The actual Andre yeah, Agassi? Yeah, yeah. The Fenland. Yeah. Oh, the Fenland. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah, lovely guy, brilliant fun. Is he? Yeah, he's really <laughs> lovely. And then we've got March top individuals, Polly eighteen oh seven, Big Fish Kilby yeah twelve oh nine, and Ben Jackson eleven oh five yeah brilliant. That's the lot. Yeah, that but... concludes the result. <laughs> <laughs> well read. <laughs> James Alexander Gordon did the football results and it for years and used to hear on the radio. Green Alexander won. Chelsea. Yes, yeah. that's all that's yeah. all I remember on a Saturday lunchtime five. childhood. Football scores. Talking of football, I needed your team to get a draw. Uh, what oh my, we talk about football sometimes. Oh my god, I'm an Arsenal fan. Who's his team? Newcastle, believe oh, it or not. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and they needed a draw against Man City and let's down. Oh, I even right. messaged Jimmy, he didn't reply. No. I was busy at work, you know. Not a man of ledger, you have to get on with things, don't you? Oh, I was getting sunlight in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Cheesy yesterday morning. Did you? I went down the river on my yeah. boat, first yeah. thing, and he, he, I could tell by the look on his face, he thought, who's that coming down? And I just went, I went, yup! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I went, what oh, what oh? Because he, so, uh, he has a different language, doesn't he? It's yeah. a Marx language. Yeah. Oh, I see. He yeah. runs a, he, uh, he's, a, he's a market store holder. Oh, okay. Sells cheese. Oh, yeah. Hence, Cheesy Bob. Cheesy Bob. So all the old ladies are going to buy the cheese off the market. They call him Cheesy Bob. Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh. Cheesy. Morning, <laughs> Cheesy. <clears throat> but he always catches a tench, so Alex has changed it to Cheesy Bob, Bob Fitch. Te- oh, yeah. okay. Bob and Fitch, John Fitch Tench. Right. Yeah, so it's, yeah. Another nickname. Another yeah. nickname. Yeah, got to be a nickname. You can make one up for me when I've left. I think, and yeah. Well, me another day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fact that March tackling babes is whatever. Yeah, that's fantastic. Right, that concludes it, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for, thanks oh, no, for letting me come I and watch. Done my, uh, oh, chip I shop do anymore. this every week. Oh, you've forgotten oh, it. Right, let's go. Oh, no, okay. chip shop. One right. time, I stopped recording. We had to start recording again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I do this no, every week. Yeah. I do a podcast. As long as you haven't packed up. Yeah. This, this, the angler that's won it this week, I've been waiting all year, but he always draws MPEGs. So, obviously, if you draw an MPEG, you can't get beaten both sides. Oh, okay. So... Uh, oh there was a few that could have got the award. Pete McFadden got battered both sides, but you know, he was going to get it until I see the other results. And James Draculic got battered both sides, and they were both tench, so even better. So there's a lovely you picture here. Yeah, we'll put a picture up here. We've got yeah. a picture of James. As soon as I see that, I even <coughs> have a special t shirt in my van ready for it to happen. Oh, you got him straight away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't know. I just like. Crept up on him and went, this yours, mate? <laughs> <laughs> and he took it well. Is this like the ultimate humiliation? Yeah, I think the way you take it is more of the thing. Rather, When you win it, and no one wants to win it, obviously. Some people do. They're like obsessed trying to win it, but they're the people that are never going to get it. Right. But, you, I don't know, when you get it, you've got to embrace it. and sort Yes. Of, Fully take it on yeah, the chin, yeah. acceptance. Because if you don't, ooh. <laughs> And Alex is really good because um, 
he tries to target the really good anglers because it's not often this happens. They to, will get yeah, battered yeah, yeah, both yeah. sides. This is why yeah. this is yeah. <clears throat> so That's why this is special. Yeah, yeah. James is a, James yeah. is a really good angler. The guy that got it before the what, Will Freeman is yeah. another yeah. exceptional angler. So Alex is like, I've got him. Yeah. Doesn't it happens <laughs> once or twice a season? So yeah. the fact that he can he sweet can, victory. He is yeah. <laughs> Everything else didn't matter on Sunday. <laughs> as soon as I see that board, I was like, yes. Just try it back to the draw. Yeah. Because a lot of them now, they're talking about this all the time, aren't they? Yeah. But even within the teams, like, there's banter. Oh, look. Oh, he got chip shot. You know, there's... I don't know. It just creates an atmosphere. It's good. Well, you were telling me earlier on the phone that you get sent pictures from what? Yeah. Um, there's a group of lads from sort of the manchester Bolton area. And often I get a little, you know, what, a messenger. And, you know, like, when you have your fish and chips, sometimes there's a picture of fish and some chips, like, fish and chips on it. Yeah. Well... Each week they give out a fish and chip award and they get like a carrier bag. It's, it, it's just, it's, it's a bit of shit really, but it's, it's not brilliant. Your t-shirt. No, but no, it's still, it's, it's the it's whole carrying it yes, on, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, the thing. The banter. Yeah, that's but, right. Yeah, it's, it is good. So before we go, I want to add to this because we were talking about this on the phone earlier. In order for this, I think for this podcast now to grow, it needs to become more national. And I mentioned this a few weeks ago. We want actually anglers in different parts of the country just to send me a very quick video of them doing their match results. So sort of two or three minutes would be really good. And what we'll do next year, I'll begin, we'll carry on the Chip Shop Award. Yeah. And if we had, say, um, four or five representatives around the country, we will post them 50 T-shirts. Mm-hmm. So they can then hand out these T-shirts and keep it going. But it's over to you guys, really. We need people to volunteer to do this. Now, Alex is going to have a think over the summer, mm. and we will ask, be asking one or two people to do this. But I think in order to spread all this, and it's all good fun, that if we can get one or two guys volunteering to do it, it'd be really good. And I think that's one of the ways we can sort of grow this. So it's, um, spread, the spread, spread the message. Spread mm. the love and yeah. the T-shirts and everything spread else that the goes. Banter. <laughs> spread the banter. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. You've learned an awful lot about how not to do a podcast <laughs> and how prepared to be when... T- what, is, what is your podcast going to be all health and... Well, do you know, actually, no, it isn't. One of the things that I was talking to Andy about earlier is that we have our fitness classes, mm-hmm. but we get just as much value from having the coffee chat yeah, yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And we talk about all kinds of issues and resolve some as yeah. well, if, if you know what I mean, just by talking them through. So... It, it is going to be more about yeah. those kind of things, not necessarily women's issues. But when I first spoke to Andy about it, you know, I do know quite a lot of people who've overcome a lot of adversity mm-hmm. in their life that I think other people would benefit well, well, from yeah. hearing, maybe to pull them out of a hole. But um, notwithstanding that, I, I think a bit like yours is Tales from the Tackle Shop. Mm. It will be something along the lines of, you know, chats yeah. from the coffee shop because yeah. we get so much value out of those chats yeah. that we have afterwards, helping each other, supporting each other. So, it, pretty much, you know, a bit like you two having a little bit of banter today. Mm. Um, but we'll pick a theme each week uh, as to what we're going to talk about. So, you know, I think it'd be a brilliant idea. Yeah, and obviously we'll we'll reciprocate. We'll, yeah, we'll spread the the word about it when you get it off the ground. But um. No, in Tara, Alex, she'll get 50,000 views on the first three. And we'll oh, be... this is what he's worried about. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And we'll be like, Andy, yeah, you but... need to adopt an abundance mindset, <laughs> not a scarcity <laughs> mindset. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. Uh, stop stop There's to enough you. love for everyone. Yeah. 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 I go, Alex, we're not having on again. Look what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> no, really good luck with everything you're doing. And like you were saying about these messages that you get from people when you don't post one. Yeah. It's really important because it people yeah. are watching and they're relying upon you. Mm. That's what brings it home. Yeah. Yeah. And then you give yeah. yourself a kick up the backside and go, come on, yeah. stop being pathetic. Yeah. Just get on with it. Yeah. yeah. So keep the messages coming in. Keep, um, keep us in touch with what you're doing. Next week will be the last one for this season. And Alex, I think you're going to get it. What? She's got two weeks to get some more ammo on you, so you're in trouble. Bring it on. Right, we are going to go. Thank you again, Tara. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye.